If you want to learn how you can open a restaurant location for less than $10,000, then this video is for you. I've seen many of the most savvy independent restaurant owners do that to succeed in opening new locations over the past seven years. Whether it's first time operators opening their first location or experienced operators expanding to multiple locations using this strategy as efficiently as possible, I'll share how I've seen it in action, how I've seen them use distressed asset buys to open new locations as cheaply as possible, the things they look for in their process, how they find great deals, how distressed asset buys even work, and how you can avoid hidden costs and set up restaurants for success from the start. So let's dive into it. This video was inspired by my friend, Timory Shibley, who opened her restaurant, The Doodah Diner in Wichita, Kansas for less than $10,000. That was 12 years ago, and she's since gone on to become one of the most successful restaurant owners in her state, doing over $10 million in sales. So you're probably wondering, how on earth did she start with less than $10,000 and then go on to do over $10 million in 12 years? She did what's called a distressed asset buy, which is taking over a restaurant that had failed. In her case, it was a Chinese restaurant that she'd found on Craigslist. The owner was desperate to get out because he had personally guaranteed the lease and the restaurant was losing him money each month, even after it was closed. When Timory offered to take it over for $7,500, it seemed like a good way for him to move on. Then importantly, Timory found a savvy lawyer to structure the deal in a way that protected her from all of the potential hidden costs and let her take over the lease in a fresh entity. And then she converted that failed Chinese restaurant to being the most popular diner in town. It's not just Timory and it's not just new restaurant owners. I work with thousands of restaurant owners and I often see the most savvy operators use distressed asset buys to open new locations without having to spend six figures in build outs and equipment for each one. Like I just saw my friend Enga from Matanga's Pizzeria, a chain of five pizzerias in San Antonio, use this to take over a failed Pizza Hut franchise and turn it into one of her locations extremely inexpensively. It all starts with step one finding the perfect asset to buy. The hardest and most important part of this whole process is finding that perfect asset buy, just like Timory did on Craigslist. When you find that a restaurant is struggling or closed and you make a deal to buy their equipment and lease, that's what's called an asset buy. The difference between buying a business and doing an asset buy is that buying a business is buying the operating business one that's still open with a team of people and systems for you to take over. Buying a business is almost always more expensive than doing an asset buy. Because when you're doing an asset buy, you're buying the assets of a failed business that they probably spent hundreds of thousands of dollars building out and putting equipment into and setting up. So you might be wondering, why would they sell you their lease, their equipment, which literally cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars to set up? Why would they sell that for less than $10,000? The answer there is because they're often in debt over those assets. They have to sign personal guarantees to get the lease in the first place. And now the business has failed and they just wanna move on from that. When restaurant owners sign a personal guarantee on a lease and the restaurant then fails, it means that they get charged every month for the real estate, even if the restaurant isn't operational. So by selling their assets, including the lease, to a new restaurant owner, they can get themselves out of the debt that they have to pay for the lease each month and in exchange give you their equipment and other key items to kickstart your new restaurant concept cheaply. So where do you look for an asset buy? The good news is that you no longer have to rely on clunky Craigslist for buying and selling businesses. The top website to search for businesses for sale in your city is called Biz Buy Sell. To see the failed restaurants trying to sell their assets in your city, you just visit bizbuysell.com and you go to buy a business top left. Then you select asset sales under buy a business, you type in your city, you select restaurant as the industry, and that pulls up all of the restaurant assets on the market. I sense what you're probably thinking right now. Adam, 
why would I buy a failed restaurant? Doesn't that mean the location is bad and that my restaurant could potentially fail as a result? The answer here is that that might be true, but there's many, many reasons restaurants fail. And a location being bad is only a small fraction of the possible reasons. Other times, it's the food being bad. Or maybe the owner ran into health issues and got hit with medical bills and ran out of money. So keep an open mind as you're evaluating opportunities and ask yourself, what probably caused this restaurant to fail. Was it the location? If it was the location, then don't take that location. But if it were any of the many other reasons, then it might be worth considering. That takes us to step two, how to evaluate opportunities once you find them. How do you actually figure out what the good deals are? The first tip here is to ignore the asking price on BizBuySell or any of the other websites. I've heard that those numbers are really just fantasy land and that once you meet the sellers and you hear the situations they're in, see that they've signed personal guarantees that cost them thousands of dollars each month, then the price becomes very negotiable. Even if they say they're asking $50,000, I've heard that that can routinely get dropped to $5,000 or less. Sometimes you can even negotiate what's called seller financing, where they give you the assets without having to give them any cash up front, almost like a loan, and then you pay them back as your business succeeds. Before we get there though, let's focus on evaluating the difference between different asset buy opportunities. There's a few things that you've got to check with the opportunities you review, both to make sure your restaurant is successful and to avoid huge hidden costs. The first thing is quality of lease and real estate, because that's the first and most important thing that you get in an asset buy. Always check this first, because it's not even worth diving deeper into the other details unless the location is going to set you up for success. On the location front itself, it's worth double checking that they have the obvious, enough space to fit your vision for a restaurant concept, solid parking, car traffic, and foot traffic outside. You can see this either on the listing or by just physically going to the space and looking around over the course of an hour. Then look in their lease contract to see how much they're paying per square foot and how that compares to the price per square foot in your area. If you want me to research what the average price per square foot is for restaurant spaces in your city with my team, then just comment your city down below and what type of restaurant you're thinking about starting up. Then I'll dig up the latest numbers and I'll reply back to you in a comment for free with details on your real estate market. Anyway, it's important to compare what their price per square foot is in their lease to the market. If they signed the lease in 2019, it's probably going to be way higher than what market is today versus if they signed the lease in 2021 in the middle of the pandemic. This is really, really important because paying less for real estate costs can become a major driver of profitability with your eventual restaurant. Then comes the less obvious stuff. In asset buys, you often take over the lease of the restaurant that was there before you. So you need to ensure that their existing lease contract has no gotchas and ideally has either five years left on the term or fair renewal language. It's likely that as part of taking over the lease, you don't just transfer it to yourself, but you get the chance to renegotiate any gotchas. When I say gotchas, here are some of the top things that you can check to make sure you do not put them in your lease or create serious financial risk for yourself. The first is kick out clauses. Sometimes landlords will sneak in language to the lease that they can kick you out at their will or if your sales aren't enough. This is obviously dangerous for a new restaurant. And if you see it, it's not worth moving forward unless you can remove it from the lease with the landlord. The second is anti-force majeure clauses. Force majeure is fancy legal talk for unforeseen events, like say a pandemic forcing down restaurants to be shut down for weeks. After the pandemic, landlords started getting aggressive with saying that the tenant is responsible no matter what happens, like if pandemics shut down the world again. And you wanna make sure that your lease does not include that type of language, that you're responsible no matter what happens, whether a pandemic or some flood, that you're responsible for the restaurant space. That's a bit absurd. That brings us to common area maintenance costs. Sometimes landlords will put in the lease that you're responsible for the cost that they have to pay for maintaining common areas, which is very vague language. So if they decide to put in new tile outside, they can say that was necessary and that cost is on you. I recommend trying to keep the common area maintenance language out of the lease or putting a hard max on it, like a thousand dollars a year and requiring transparency so that your landlord doesn't try any funny business. I'm not a real estate attorney and this is just for informational purposes. So feel free to consult a real estate attorney when you get closer to the process if you decide 
decide that that asset buy is a fit for you in every other way, then you can get into legal negotiation on the contracts. Once you've finished step two and confirmed that one, the location can support your vision, two, the lease is fair and has a price per square foot at or under market, and three, there's no gotchas in the lease, then it's time to get to the next part of the asset sale, the working equipment that's included with the restaurant. This is the single biggest area of savings or potential death that can happen with an asset buy. Working kitchen equipment, and ideally tables and chairs, but especially working kitchen equipment that has to be in good condition. Because if it's not, then it can cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars to replace. New commercial refrigerators and ovens, depending on what your concept needs. If you don't get all of this in the asset sale, then it's almost not worth it. So how can you figure out if the equipment is high quality? The easy answer here is you find a trusted restaurant consultant that specializes in back of house. Ideally, that's been part of asset buys before because these are common and you pay them a fair consulting fee, $250 or $500 for two or three hours to inspect the equipment, try things out and note the working condition of all of it. I cannot emphasize this enough. If the equipment needs to be replaced, you need to know that ahead of time because brand new commercial refrigerators and ovens and stoves can add over $50,000 in surprise costs, which can sink a new restaurant. One last thing when you're evaluating the asset buy, which can be absolute gold if they have it. And that's the bonus in this video. Number four, a customer database of opt-ins. You may be thinking, Adam, who cares if this failed restaurant has a customer database of opt-ins? Future you does. Here's why. If they built a list of thousands of people who were their regular customers, who are used to going to your restaurant and who they got legally opted in to hear from for their marketing purposes, then you can send those people an email and a text and a direct mail message when you first open and tell them about your new concept. Because they're already familiar with the space in the neighborhood, they're far more likely to come in and try your restaurant and eventually become regulars. This can not only surge sales by thousands of dollars when you're first starting out, but it can help you acquire the most loyal possible group of strangers, people that have already been regulars of a restaurant in that exact space. Humans have what's called familiarity bias, where we tend to like things more if we're familiar with some parts of them. And if they're already familiar with eating in your space and parking outside and we're a regular customer of a past restaurant there, they'll probably be more likely to enjoy your restaurant. The other way this bonus tip applies is if they have social media pages that they built up for their previous restaurant that you can buy. You can negotiate those as part of the asset sale and just change the name of the page from their restaurant name to yours. This has a similar effect of kickstarting your new concept because then all of the people that followed their previous page, which are the previous customers, will look at your restaurant concept and be that much more likely to try it. So you might be wondering, where does the less than $10,000 figure come from? That's a price that many of the sellers are often willing to agree to just to get out of the personal guarantees or move on. I've heard of people literally agree to give their assets in an asset sale for free to get out of the liability. Sometimes you'll find situations where their build out is so nice and their equipment is so much and they have multiple competing offers, so they insist on more than $10,000. And maybe you'll feel that it's worth it, but you don't have that kind of cash upfront. Here's where that earlier tip of seller financing comes in. Savvy new restaurant owners can negotiate what's called seller financing for asset buys. That means that they'll say something like, okay, Mr. Seller, I know you wanna get a minimum of $50,000 because you put $500,000 into this build out, but I don't have $50,000 in cash. So here's what I can do for you. I can give you $10,000 upfront and give you 10% of my sales once we open until I pay you back $40,000 more. Then I'll give you 5% of my sales until you get an extra $10,000 to give you some interest for the loan or similar creative restructuring where you can give them a percentage of sales. I've even seen people take over restaurants this way outside of asset buys and basically give them seller financing where they don't even pay any money for the restaurant. They take it over and then they give them a percentage of sales until they get a certain amount. Most of the people in these situations, asset buys or selling underperforming restaurants, just want to move on and stop bleeding cash every month with the lease that they've personally guaranteed. So I've heard of many times where they've taken deals like that. Anyway, if you're curious, 
curious about the surprising reasons why restaurants fail in the first place, I actually just posted a video doing a deep dive on that. So click to the right of me to see it now because I just put it up on screen. And I highly recommend taking a look so that you can avoid those mistakes in your restaurant.